Greetings and salutations, everyone. Crimson Nero here, and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red. In the last episode, we finished up all the trainer battles in routes 15, 16, I mean 17, 16, 17, and 18. And in this episode, we are going to start our adventures in Fuchsia City with the Safari Zone. Let's get started. Welcome to the Safari Zone. For just 500 Poke Dollars, you can play the Safari game. You can roam this wide open safari and catch what you like. Would you like to play? Sure. That'll be 500 Poke Dollars, please. We only use a special kind of Poke I'm Poke Balls here. I have received 30 Safari Balls. We'll call you on the PA when you're time I'm when you run out of time or Safari Balls. Well, I'll wish you the best of luck. We're out here in the African Outback, trying to find ourselves legendary wild Pokemon. All right, so uh, here is the Safari Zone. Uh, there are wild Pokemon all over the place, and uh, there's uh, there's actually a lot of st uh, there's actually a lot of like hidden stuff that sh you guys want to just kind of keep in keep a keep an eye out for. In terms of getting Pokemon, I don't need any, I don't really want any, or I already have what I want. Uh, there's a lot of Nidorans, Nidorinos, uh, other some such. I think a Scyther, maybe a Rhyhorn, maybe a Genghis Khan or something, but like, I really don't need anything because there's only one more spot in my party left, and I know exactly who it's going for, or going to, really. And we'll be, we will be meeting him very soon. But not here. There are a lot of Pokeballs around here uh, that I'm kind of missing, but really the, the important thing is that if you pause the game, you see that you start out with 600 steps. Once, that, I mean, once you've taken 600 steps, they call you back in. Or if you run out of poke, I am uh, Pokeballs, but I'm not doing that, so I really don't need to pay that close attention. But in terms of what I need to take care of, let's see, I need to go this way. And then get thrust right into an encounter. Against a Nidorino, not bad, not bad, but I'm out of here. Bye. Let's see. I'm going dead this way. Found a max revive. Excellent. A max potion. Suddenly I am French. Uh, you are not who I want. Move. Move, please. Move, please. Thank you. Uh, this is not the place I wanted to be. I goofed up. My bad. Oops. This it might cost me. Ah, stop going the wrong way. GameCube controller, please. Don't need to know about trainer tips right now. I need to go to the right area. I need to go up here. And go into like every random encounter possible. Oh, hey look, a Rhyhorn. No thanks. Ooh, Steel Wing. Or I might be really interested in that and a protein excellent gonna go this way ooh a chancy normally if this were a normal playthrough I would say get it get it get it get it get it because there's a 5% chance that you might capture it with a lucky egg item uh, w with it holding a lucky egg item and lucky egg item 
what a Lucky Egg does is that if you equip it onto a Pokemon, then it will receive extra experience. And I got a gold tooth? Or gold teeth? Well, stop doing things I don't want you to! Gold teeth, a set of false teeth lost by the Safari Zone's warden. It makes his smile sparkle. Oh, I see. And I only have a few more steps to go before I'm called back in, so I really want to make sure that these count. Double team. Alright, I got enough steps. I got this. Ah, finally! You're the first person to reach the secret house! Although I made a campaign for our grand opening, I was getting worried that no one would win our campaign prize. Congratulations! You have won! I have received HMO3! HMO3 is Surf! Pokemon will be able to ferry you across water using it. And this HM is, uh, isn't disposable, so you can use it over and over. You're super lucky for winning this fabulous prize. Thank you. Uh, first off, I'm gonna go in and grab it from the TM case. And I'm going to immediately teach it to Leviathan. I'm surprised that Inigo can learn it as well, but I need a new water type move. Absorption! Alright, and we got Surf! Excellent! And like, as soon as I walk outside, it'll be like, bing bong, time to go! Well, I guess I'm just running around then. Ten. There we go! Alrighty. So, the two biggest things that you want to make sure of when you do the Safari game, and keep in mind that it, it's kind of cheap, so if you're looking for Pokemon, great! You can you can go through it as many times as your, heart's, as your heart desires. As for uh, the important stuff, make sure that you pick up the gold uh, and the gold teeth, and that you pick up Surf, because those are the big things. Hello, sir. I have given you your gold teeth back. Thanks, son! You're a real lifesaver! No one could understand a word I said! Not a one! I was so... Uh, I... Uh, I was too ashamed to show my face around the office, even. Let me give you something for your trouble. I have received HMO4! HMO4 is strength! It allows your Pokemon to push gigantic boulders. And I think I'm gonna give it to my buddy Inigo. Let's, oh wow, you already have cuts. Uh. Mm. I think I'm actually gonna save that for a little bit later. Let's see, would you like to... No. Yes. Alright, I'm gonna have to remember to come back here. I really hope I remember, because I think that Pokeball right there is a rare candy. But, yeah. We've got... We've taken care of the... The most important, uh, little thing right there. The second thing that we... Um, actually... I want to ride over to the person who lives right next door. Because I think they might have something important for me. Hiya. Uh, I like to fish. Hey, I got a good rod. Cool. But don't I already have the super rod? Anyways, uh... Oh, hey, look, a max revive. Excellent. But yeah, there's, uh... I think there's a chance you can catch Dratini in this pond? Maybe? I could be extremely wrong, but... Eh, whatever. The biggest thing is that we got two new HMs, which are awesome, and 
um, as well as they're both actually pretty good uh, battle moves as well. And now the big thing is, all that's left to do here is take on the gym. So let's see. Uh, start out with Inigo. This is a poison type gym, by the way. So having a, a few poison types myself would actually be very nice to have. And as you can see, like, oh, hey, look, I can just walk right on up to the boss. Nope. Invisible walls, because that dude's a ninja. Hi. Strength isn't the key for Pokemon. Do you understand this? Pokemon is about strategy. I'll show you how strategy can beat brute strength. The thing is, is that he's actually completely correct, because... I know a lot of people who play, like, who play Pokemon in more of a competitive, in more of a competitive way, and yeah, they, they go pretty hardcore with certain strategies and stuff, like, uh, I don't know, like, putting down, like, using buffs and debuffs and, uh, special abilities and items and stuff like that just so they can get an upper hand and, like, breeding the, per the perfect Pokemon and making sure that they have the right moves, and yeah, there's a lot that goes into competitive... Pokemon battling. That was a good amount of experience. Alright. I was a magician once upon a time. But I dreamt of becoming a ninja, so I joined this gym. Okay, let's see. I guess I'm just gonna keep doing uh, Horn Attack then, considering it's pretty much my strongest move. And considering I'm fighting against Psychic Types... Ouch. Considering I'm fighting against Psychic Types, I need something that's strong that'll get them out before they can continue to use Psychic Type moves to hit me really hard. Wow, you got a lot of, a lot of Pokemon there. And the crits is a one-hit KO! Good! Way to go, Inigo. Kadabra. Let's see... Horn attack? Hey. Wow, Inigo, you are just wrecking face right now. Good job. Real quick. I want to fight this guy. Because otherwise I'll probably forget before I actually get to the to Koga. Let's see you beat my special techniques. Whoa, I know Kung Fu. The thing, uh, cool thing uh, that I want you guys to know is that I actually studied martial arts for about four years uh, back during uh, junior high, and uh, I studied a South Korean form of martial arts known as Hapkido, which translates out to be the art of coordinated power. And so, a lot of a lot of Hapkido is using your opponent's force against them. So, you I mean, like if someone's trying to like punch you or something, then you you basically like use that that force to either like get out of the way, maybe counterattack, maybe flip someone over, uh, just something in order to give you an upper hand by using your opponent's uh, strength to damage them, and you don't have to do quite as much work. But uh, I I studied for four years, and I uh, I got my black belt, and it was a huge it was a huge um, moment for me in my life. Uh, especially because I'm not necessarily the most athletic person. I mean, like, I do, like, I 
I like I've done sports in my time, but like I do very particular sports. I'm not a person who's like, oh yeah, I, pl I played football and I lifted weights and I did wrestling when I was in high school. Like no 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 no. I did. I did uh, swimming. I, okay, let's see. I played soccer when I was a kid because, well, everyone played soccer when they were a kid. Then I did swimming for many, many years because I, I love to swim. Um, let's see. Uh, what else? I did martial arts and I've done cross country and uh, cross country running. So yeah, I've I've done some pretty weird sports, like not exactly the more popular ones, but uh, I've definitely I definitely have done a lot of athletic things in my life. Uh, some of my biggest accomplishments would be to getting my black belt, as well as running a half marathon, which is 13.1 miles, and I did that under two hours, uh, and that was back during my senior year of high school. So that was kind of that was a big moment for me. Or those were two big moments for me. Um, I stopped really doing a whole lot of sports things, minus cross country. Um, well, actually, uh, in cross country, um, not really a personal thing, but like being part of the team. My team won the the state championships three out of the four years that I was in high school, so that was really really cool. Um, so yeah, as well as like I also kind of like had a reputation uh, when I was running uh, cross country. I was known as uh, the one of the hill guys because we had this huge hill at our school, and we always used to train on it. We always used to like run up and down it a whole bunch, and like some people would say that sounds absolutely miserable, but trust me, it definitely helps. It helps work a lot of muscles uh, that you wouldn't really expect, and it also like gets you prepared for exactly when you do run up hills. Exactly how do you pace yourself? Oh, another thing that I did is that um, I also did a 300-mile bike uh, bike trip in four days. So we traveled 400, I mean, 300 miles in four days just on bikes. I didn't walk a single step; it was all on the bike. So yeah, that was that was actually pretty cool to do. But uh, going back to martial arts for a second, so. Um, in Hapkido, uh, when I was testing for my black belt, it was like December. Uh, it was like it was getting really late in the calendar year, so it was either like late November or like early December. And it was a Friday night, and we were supposedly going to have a good amount of snow come in like that evening, like in like I don't know, like two in the morning or so. And when I was when uh, when my master came over. To uh, to congratulate me and give you uh, and to tie my my new belt on my waist because that's that's what they do is that like uh, normally you tie your own belt on but when you're a black belt uh, like it's a time for like you've earned this this is your moment um, and so he said so apparently there's supposed to be a lot of uh, a lot of snow coming tonight do you have anything to do with this and I looked at him just dead in the eye keep in mind I'm exhausted I did like every single like trick in the book that I had and like I was dead tired and I looked at him uh, and I just like I made like on the inside I was like I am so glad that I'm done because like I was exhausted but like I looked at him in like the calmest demeanor and I like the calmest way and like I, I just matter-of-factly said I think it's just because I'm that cool I literally just, I acted like a total cocky jerk to my master just so I could make a stupid little joke and it worked and everyone brought, I like busted out laughing and I'm like, that is not something to really laugh at, but okay, I'm totally okay with this. So yeah, like, I took up martial arts because like, I, I'd watched a lot of like martial arts films when I was a kid, I watched Dragon Ball Z and like... Like, I practiced, and, like, at first I was like, yeah, this is really, really cool. I really, really cool. But, like, as, like, when you, from an outsider's perspective, you're like, oh, yeah, you, you act so tough because you learn martial arts. Well, like, it's not just to, like, to show, like, athletic prowess, but it's also to protect yourself. And, like, you realize that, like, what you can do can help protect you as well as to harm others so like you need to you keep need to keep that in mind and and focus 
on what needs to be taken care of, I guess. Like, if you get into a fight, then there's points in which you either think, okay, I need to back down, or I know exactly how to get out of this, and so you need to respond accordingly. Like, if someone's coming after you and you're, I, and, like, they're just fighting you for no reason, then you just do your best to just block and, uh, and dodge as much as possible without causing any immediate harm. But if someone, I am, but, like, if they, I, like, if you are severely, like, if you're severely uh, threatened, then either defend yourself or run. Like, it, there's, like, yeah, saying, like, oh, yeah, I stayed behind and fight. I and fought. Like, yeah, that says something about you, but knowing when to pick and choose your battles also says something about you. And some people might say, well, if you run from a fight, you're a coward. No, 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 no. Trust me, Once you, when you figure out exactly when when there is a time to fight and when there is a time to run, you'll realize that running sometimes is the better option. Especially if you're like me who can run for days. Well, okay, not specifically days, but like who can run a long time and quite fast at, at that point. Just run if you need to, get additional help, call the police if you need to, but like if it's just like a, a petty little tussle, then just just block and dodge and wait for them to to just tire themselves out. If it starts to escalate beyond that, then get help. Definitely get help and do what you can to help yourself. What the? Oh, that's not the right one. This is the right one. Okay, let's see. You know what? I think this is actually a pretty good spot to uh, to leave things off here. We got through pretty much the entirety of the gym. We figured out everything when it came to the uh, Safari Zone. So now all that's left is to take on Koga. So yeah, look forward to that in the next episode of Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red. I'm Crimson Ear. Thank you very much for watching this episode. And until next time, everyone, fare thee well.